Hello my fellow Kerbonauts, and today we're in Kerbal Space Program and I'm going to show you how to capture an asteroid. So the first thing you need to do is find one, and you're going to do that by going into the tracking station, clicking on them as they appear until you find one that you like, that's in a, with an orbit around Kerbin with a low periapsis, or is going to get in one, and then hit uh, track object in the bottom left. Once you've done that, you're going to switch to your rocket, which I'm going to talk about the design aspects of in a couple of seconds when we decide to actually launch, so we're going to wait till um, and we're going to launch basically when we're in line with the orbit of the asteroid like you saw there. And that means we're going to be able to launch into an orbit that's straight with the same inclination as the, as the asteroid. So your rocket is going to need quite a lot of delta V, quite a heavy final stage, because that final stage is going to have to push the asteroid. Now it's going to depend on the size of the asteroid, they go from A to E, E being the biggest and A being the smallest. And A is only like carrying another few, couple of fuel tanks I guess. Whereas an E is, you know, like carrying a space station. So anyway, your rocket's going to need to be really big, and it's going to need to have some one kind of grabby arm thing on it. And you're probably also going to want to have a couple of little probes, like you can see I've got on the side of my rocket, on the side of my last stage. And those probes are what I'm going to use to actually um, bring the asteroid down to Kerbin safely, because I'd like to bring it home rather than just into orbit. Although if you don't want to bring it into... Uh, well, well, if you don't want to bring it within the atmosphere and onto the ground, then you don't need to. You can just leave it in orbit. That's absolutely fine. But anyway, I've got a grabber on the on an arm that's on the front of the main on the main stage on the main la not lander stage really, but yeah, the command pod I guess. And then uh, readily mounted to that, I've got two little probes that also have grabber arms and a load of parachutes on them, so that I can bring the asteroid down with reasonable levels of control. Although I don't think they actually get destroyed if you bring them down without parachutes, so you know, I guess you can do that as well. It just means you don't get really get to choose where they land very much. Anyway, there we go. We're in a circular orbit with the same inclination to our target, which, if you don't know, is the pink marker on the nav ball, and you can actually use that to get to launch into the same inclination because that tells you which direction to launch you launch into that pink circle marker. And now we're just making an adjustment burn to make sure that we're in the perfect inclination rather than about right. Uh, so that's what we're doing now, and that's an 112 meters a second burn you can see there. So that takes not too long really, it's not a very difficult burn to do. And we've still got a pretty good amount of fuel left, so I'm not too worried. Uh, the asteroid we're capturing is a class C asteroid as you can see here, and now we're just time warping till it gets a bit closer so that we're ready to actually burn and make that uh, intercept. This is very similar to if you're doing a rendezvous, so go and check out my rendezvous tutorial if you want a bit, help, bit of help with that. But basically you're going to need to set up a maneuver that brings you um, into contact with the asteroid, um, you know, near its periapsis around Kerbin, hopefully, because that's the most efficient place to do it. But you may have to adjust it a bit from there. I get pretty lucky; mine's fairly close, so it's pretty efficient as well. And uh, yeah, that's it's a it's a bit tricky to get it set up. But if you're in the right inclination, then you shouldn't have too much trouble setting it up once you're comfortable with rendezvous uh, with other craft in you know that are already in stable orbits. This is just a bit more difficult because you only really have one shot at it. You can't miss and go around again. Anyway, so now we've got that intercept, that's uh, 20 odd kilometers. I'm just adjusting it now, I'm trying to get as close as I can by burning prograde and retrograde. And I can you can use a little bit of RCS there if you want to make fine adjustments, so don't worry too much about that. But anyway, when, as long as you win within you know 10, 20 kilometers of it, that's alright. You won't have too much trouble from there, and then when you start getting close to it, you know, maybe with, maybe even within a hundred kilometers of it, you want to go into target velocity mode on the nav ball and start burning retrograde, and you want to keep doing that until your target velocity is pretty close to zero. If it's still behind you and it's still catching up with you, you can leave it at maybe a hundred meters a second or so, the target velocity, so that it keeps catching up to you, and um, that's what I did here. I waited till it got right up next to me on the orbits you can see there, and then got rid of that last bit of target velocity. And from here it's just like a normal rendezvous, except the distance is a, a little bit greater than usual. Although if you did everything perfectly you could probably get these down to, you know, a couple of kilometers by now. So here you go, I'm just burning towards the target. The target node is obviously the pink one on the nav ball, and I'm making my prograde marker go there. And then burning retrograde when we get close enough to it. So there we go, we're 300 meters away. Now it's time to start the final approach. So just start burning towards it a little bit, and there's not really much 
to worry about here. This is again sort of like a normal rendezvous, you're just trying to get yourself as close as possible before you really start using RCS. Except this is a lot easier than docking. All you have to do is go straight at it with that arm opened and then once you've done that, uh, make sure you're not going too fast, you only want to be going at a few meters a second when you do it. Um, I came in a little bit hot there really, but it worked, so now I'm just transferring mono propellant over to the little probes that we have. Because obviously, as I said, I want to attach them to the asteroid to slow it down a bit when it's in the atmosphere. And there we go, that's the mono propellant being filled up. And yeah, that's pretty much it for now, so we just have to decouple those and attach them. So the next thing we're going to do is actually, um, I'll explain this before we do it, because this is a bit more complicated, is we're going to right click on the asteroid and hit target center of mass. And that what that will let us do is point our rocket through the center of mass of the asteroid, meaning that we can actually burn and we won't spin out. Because if you burn, but you're not burning through the center of mass, you're burning to one side, then it will start to spin. And uh, obviously that's not a good thing, because it's very, very difficult to control. So there's the target of, target center of mass button, obviously I'm using a probe though, so it's not relevant at the moment really. I was just using it to set the thing as our target. But I'm trying to get it sort of with, a, with these two probes a bit spread out so that the parachutes aren't all in one place. It doesn't really matter though. And here we go, so now target center of mass, then you're going to free the pivot on the uh, grabbing arm the advanced grabbing unit by right clicking on it and then you're going to move your craft so that it's pointing into the target uh, the target node on your nav ball which is obviously the center of mass because you've just done that and then you're going to lock the grabbing arm or the advanced grabbing unit so you don't have to worry about that and now it's almost like a normal rocket except quite a bit bigger so the first thing we're going to do is burn retrograde and that is going to obviously reduce our orbital velocity. Now make sure you do change back to orbital velocity on your nav ball, otherwise you might end up messing up your orbit. Although you shouldn't really have, uh, yeah, you sh it should be fairly easy to notice. So now that we're in a stable orbit, because we burned retrograde near our periapsis, our apoapsis got reduced to within Kerbin's sphere of influence. Now we can go to our apoapsis, and because I just want to bring it down, I can um, bring it down within the atmosphere, so that it all gets slowed down by that. Now obviously if you wanted to just bring it into low carbon orbit you could do that just by adjusting your orbit like you normally would. But I'm not going to do that, I'm going to bring it all the way down to carbon. And uh, yeah, after re-entering and everything else, this is what we got. We've got our own asteroid and it's pretty awesome. Anyway, thanks for watching this tutorial guys, I hope it helped. If there was anything you struggled with, then I've probably got another tutorial on that specific topic because this is almost like a mix of all the other topics that I've covered. If you have any suggestions or questions, then please leave a comment down below, and as always, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.